In the previous episodes, we've looked at the problem of the heat engine and how we might start to make that arid region of Western Australia as wet and green as it used to be 5,000 years ago. Simple earth and stone weirs could be built there on dry catchment rivers, just as they have been for centuries beyond counting in Rajasthan, where the climate and the landscape is practically identical. The Future Drought Fund was established by the federal government to support innovative projects that combat drought on agricultural land. We think that fits this bill and there are cattle stations in the Kimberley where trials could be run. Huge amounts of rain fall across vast catchment areas in the northwest during the wet season. If we could just keep that water from draining quickly out to sea, then what? Sure, some of the extra water could be used for cattle, but it could also do so much more. Creating wetlands and forests, certainly, but above all, creating a natural pump to draw humid air in off the ocean. A biotic pump to create yet more rain and build large water cycles that carry that water further inland and eventually cool the country. Hello, Martina. What do you know about Australian wetland management? To be honest, I know Australia water issues uh, uh, not so, so deeply, but uh, I think that the main problems in Australia is dehydration of the landscape. You got it. This is a problem which is common in many other regions of the world. We try to get rid of water from our landscape as fast as possible, by uh, channelizing our streams uh, to lead the water to the sea fast. Yeah. Can new wetlands rehydrate and cool an arid region? Wetlands have an excellent function in dissipating the solar energy. We should really try to have as many wetlands and uh, trees in our landscape. So how would you go about creating them? Um, I think the most important is to try to retain water in the catchment as a whole. You have a period where you have higher rainfall and so on. It's very important that you create whatsoever structures to, to retain as much water as possible in your landscape. And you should start from the top of the catchments. That's our plan. Then we want to help plants grow. When you restore the, the hydrology, the, the vegetation usually comes back uh, by itself. If you have really good water system, you get you see that the change is pretty fast. There are countless scrubby plants and trees in the region we're talking about. Will they develop into proper forests if they have more water? I slight and agree with Peter and Jules when he said just leave every weed to, to grow. Every vegetation, which is the pioneer vegetation and so on, and which grows by itself, just let it grow and then you would see a miracle that more species are coming. Do you have any other wetland advice for a hot monsoonal region? Certainly all the existing mangroves should be protected. Mangroves are excellent ecosystems as nurseries for the fish, so it would help to reproduce the fish in the oceans. Yes, they do. Speaking of fish, I know the Czech Republic has a long tradition of building fish ponds. Are they something we should consider using too? By the fact that these are man-made habitats, they are considered by Ramsar Convention as a wetland ecosystem type, which is worthwhile protecting. Filamentos LD, as a pioneer working, they have high primary production, they will grow, then they will die, like we see, they will go down. They are organic matter, which we need for soil creation. Well, what can a wetland do to help the landscape around it? Wetlands are very, very important to recharge the aquifers, to, to recharge the groundwater levels. The, and when you have plenty of water, it goes, uh, it infiltrates into the soil and the groundwater, and in the time, 
of uh, a drought. It just replenishes the, the streams. Nature works for us, basically. Thanks, Martina. You've been really helpful. Mm. Martina expanded on some of what Peter and Martin told us previously. We also saw her Czech countryman, Jan Pakorny, who is a world-leading hydrologist. Let's see what else he can teach us. Went back to Australia several times, and several times I met Peter Andrews, who really from his experience and from the practical knowledge, he, he made very nice models how to first how to understand and how to improve a landscape. We want to discuss harvesting monsoon rain in Western Australia by building weirs high in the catchment area of rivers to provide water year round. I, I think it's a, it's a good way. If you make such a cascade, then you saturate the littoral and saturate the edges with the water. Right, and we want to create wetlands to build up carbon and nutrients so plants will grow. What is wetland? You see wetland plants here. Their roots are flooded, so there is low decomposition rate of organic matter. It's a fast way how to bring carbon by photosynthesis to organic matter in soil. And once that organic matter builds up, more plants and trees will grow. Looking at your situation in Western Australia, I think first is let us start close to the sea. Aha, uh -huh. can you explain to me why? You have a dry surface and you have a wetland or forest. Dry surface has 50 degrees on sunshine, surface temperature. Forest has 25 up and 20 on the bottom. Uh huh. Why? Because it evaporates water. Here, from the forest, above the forest, is the air which has this 25, 26 degrees and high relative humidity, which means not much water vapor more would, would be taken by air. The air goes up to one kilometer, where the temperature is six degrees lower, and it already reaches dew point. You have a small clouds, you have a droplets, and from 1,000 liters of water vapor, less than one liter of water liquid is created. A thousand litres of water vapour compresses. So there is a air pressure drop here. And this air pressure drop in one, two kilometres makes space, makes something like partly vacuum. And air can come horizontally. And if it is close to the sea, you can get wet air. If we grow trees by the coast, then they can make rain. About forest, large forest, it's really biotic pump. A biotic pump? A forest can pump rainwater inland? We explain it so that the humidity stays on the coast because it cannot go inside, because it's blocked by this hot air which is produced from sunshine. Again, the water vapour evaporates, water vapour condensates, and the air pressure in atmosphere drops and there is a space for wet air. How big a forest would we need just as an initial experiment to see any effect? Obvious question. Difficult to answer, I will try. In the strategical point of view, I think we scale 100 square kilometres and in a good position. 100? That's just 10 kilometres by 10 kilometres. And if that experimental forest works and we keep planting more trees and they spread further inland, it could make the region greener, wetter and cooler? If we have plants and productive landscape, we will have climate because we will have clouds and water cycle. You and Martina mentioned fish ponds in the Czech Republic when we talked about wetlands. It made me wonder whether we should make ponds like that here by pumping water from the enormous Canning Basin aquifer under the desert. There are two approaches. The approach classical is, let's have a look where there is the underground water. We will use it and we will uh, water the plants and they will serve us. Our aim is as soon as possible to close water cycle, which means that the plants will use 
And this is a tree now. They use rain water. We need trees to create water cycles and bring more rain. If we slow that rain from running back out to sea, we can grow more trees and create more rain, yeah? Stop rainwater and then each drop of rainwater should be used for growth of plants. That makes sense. For future, we have to start with the understanding and improving of the landscape, which is the retention of rainwater and big wet spots. Evaporation is the condition for the good climate and for the water cycle. It's not waste of water. Thank you, Jan. You have been very, very helpful. I think the next question is what sort of trees we should grow to build a biotic pump that can cool the country. This is who we need to speak to next. Arguably, I might be the world's first arbor nut, which means an explorer of the treetops. I was one of the few kids that at age three climbed trees and figured out how to turn my life love into a profession. Hello, Dr. Lohman. I've read your book, so I know you did a lot of your early work in Australia. Australia has a huge place in my heart because it's where I started my work as a tree scientists, I wanted to study the leaves of the tropical rainforest and lo and behold, they were much higher up in the tree than a good old New England oak or maple tree where I grew up. And that's what forced me to develop a lot of tools to study the tops of trees. We're looking at ideas to bring water and trees to a large region of the country and I hope you can help us. I think it's really exciting to have projects that bring water back to ecosystems, especially aware of the absolute critical importance of water for Australia. Trees are actually a major sponge that hold water in ecosystems. You're a lifelong campaigner to save existing forests, but can you offer us any advice on planting new forests? There have been some amazing global projects to plant trees. The difficulty with simply planting trees is that they need to be maintained. They need watering, they need protection from animals eating their leaves, and they need all sorts of care over many, many years. It's a tough environment we're looking at. One has to look at trees that can tolerate sun and extreme heat for starters, because otherwise there won't be too much success. There are valuable trees like teak and mahogany that grow in similar hot monsoonal conditions overseas. Could it be worth trying them in Western Australia? Trees that are introduced don't bring the native wildlife too much benefit in most cases, but at the same time, everybody's looking for trees that grow faster, provide good timber, and there is a challenge, I think, to try to find tree species that will also help conserve water. Well, is there any particular tree you'd suggest? There are some trees, like fig trees, I think that are so international and so useful. I, find myself thinking maybe we should plant figs. Yes, 100%. We have lots of different figs in Australia with those huge wide branches and thick canopies. There is no shade deeper and cooler than under a fig. So many animals eat them and so many ecosystems find they grow successfully. So maybe we just need to be selecting for these amazing super trees. Can we cool the country if we plant enough trees? Kind of sad issue to recognize is that humans got us into this situation of a warming planet and now maybe human innovation has to get us out of this situation. Will we respond in time? Your mission has been to save old growth forests more so than planting new ones. How important do you think that is now more than ever? Over 50% of the world's primary forests have been cut down in my lifetime alone and everybody says it's okay, you can plant seedlings and they'll be fine, but it really isn't okay. It's better to keep the original vegetation if we can. It's especially important to keep big trees. And whole forests of those big trees? One tree alone doesn't usually do a whole lot to keep our water supply intact, but a giant swath of trees such as the Amazon basin become gold mines for the future of our children. And so I hope, hope we can figure out ways as a planet, if we can look at ways to incentivize keeping those last big tracks of trees, 
The larger the forest, the better the water conservation. Thank you, Dr. Lohman, for talking to us today and for your lifetime of work with trees. There you go. If we harvest the rainwater, create fertile wetlands, grow more big trees and start those forests by the shore so they can create a biotic pump effect, in time we can re-green Australia like it was just a few thousand years ago. Maybe we need to look at other ideas as well. Something that could cool the country in the short term and buy us more time. That's what we're gonna do next.